Okay, last week we talked about roots and shoots. Stems are part of the shoot system. And if you remember from last week, we talked about primary and secondary growth and herbaceous stems, and these are things like uh, annuals and herbaceous perennials. These have primary growth only. And here are the structures within that this is a non-woody dicot stem and here's the epidermis and the cortex as well as the vascular bundle. I'll talk about what each one of these are and pith. So epidermis is the outer layer of the stem. Leaves will also have an epidermis. The cortex is made of calenchyma which are elongated cells. They have thick cell walls. They provide support and structure and parenchyma, which is a thin walled cell. The pith are structural cells in the middle of the stem, and in some cases this is more prominent than others depending on the plant. Vascular bundles contain the conducting vessels in the stem or leaves of the plant. This is typically with phloem on the outside, xylem on the inside, and we'll talk about what those are in a second here. So primary xylem is the water conducting tissue. This originates in the apical meristems, both in the roots and in the shoots. And primary phloem, this is the food conducting tissue and this is where it's formed and it's also originating at the apical meristems. And all of this is made up, up of ground tissue. So parenchyma is thin walled, it's alive at maturity, it provides many functions. Calenchyma, these are irregularly thick walls that have, provide structural support, and sclerenchyma, which are very thick walled and dead at maturity, also providing structural support. So xylem are made up of sclerenchyma. They're dead at maturity. They're hollow. They grow to their size first, and then they start producing a secondary cell wall. And Within xylem are tracheids, which are water conducting cells without perforations, and vessel elements. These are water conducting cells with perforations, and these tend to happen more in angiosperms than gymnosperms. Secondary xylem is true wood, and xylem conducts water along with minerals from roots to the leaf. So phloem is what transports sugar solution from the source, source being the sun, to the sink, and the sink is the plant. It's made up of parenchyma, which is a living tissue and uses active transport, and it is made up of sieve tube members and companion cells. So sieve tube cells are uh, living, and they must be living because they require membrane proteins to maintain active transport. Plasmodesmata, which we learned about uh, probably the second week, I think, first week, I think it was, they connect the sieve tubes to companion cells. This is where things uh, move across cells. And the companion cells perform many metabolic functions. They support active transport and they um, contain plasma membrane. Sieve tube cells are rigid cell walls needed for support and they are separated from one another by the sieve plates. This allows for steady flow of sap in the phloem. Okay, the cuticle is on the outside of a stem and this is a protective film covering the epidermis Leaves have this as well. It's made of cutin, and it's waxy and water repellent. Some of the things you might see on the outside of a stem would be trichomes, and trichomes are these hairs that can actually be very uncomfortable to touch, and this helps resist drought and resist pests. Okay, monocot stems have scattered vascular bundles, and remember the vascular bundles are the xylem and the phloem, 
and dicot stems have them in a ring near the epidermis. Okay, so here's a close-up of monocot stem anatomy. You've got your epidermis, you've got your vascular bundles, and then there's the ground tissue. And if you look closely to uh, where that vascular button, uh, bundle arrow is pointing, inside you will see the phloem above and then the xylem. So monocots have no secondary growth and there is no production of annual rings. They have scattered vascular bundles and each bundle is surrounded by a ring of cells called the bundle sheath. And here's just a couple of examples, bamboo and corn being uh, monocots. And here's a cross section of corn. So you see the vascular bundles run throughout the stem. And this is what the internal stem structure looks for a monocot stem. So it's throughout the, the uh, stem. Herbaceous dicot stem, you're going to have the vascular bundles around the edges. And then you're going to have rings on a woody dicot stem. Palms look like they've got trunks. They grow in girth by increasing the number of parenchyma cells and vascular bundles. They have actively dividing meristematic cells that are called the primary thickening meristem, and these surround the apical meristem at the tip of the stem. And here's what that looks like. So it's a little bit different than our woody plants. So what is vascular cambium? Vascular ca cambium is lateral meristem that generates secondary xylem and secondary phloem. In woody plants, cambium divide, continues to divide and produces new xylem cells toward the inside and new phloem toward the outside. And you saw this last week. Um, here are two lateral meristems. The vascular cambium produces secondary xylem, which is the wood and the phloem. And the cork cambium replaces the epidermis with cork. So vascular cambi cambion is a layer of cells between the primary xylem and the primary phloem. It puts on successive layers of secondary phloem to the outside and secondary xylem to the inside, and that increases the stem. And wood is the accumulation of secondary xylem. It's dead at maturity and contains lignin. Lignin is the hard part of the wood. And all the tissue from the cambium layer outward is considered bark. All the tissue inside the cambium layer to the center of the tree is wood. And here's just another slice of what that looks like. You can see the vascular cambium between the secondary phloem and the secondary xylem. Okay, sapwood is live wood. That carries water from the roots to other parts of the tree. Heartwood is dead wood. You can see that's in the very center of the tree. It provides support for the tree and it helps the tree by being resistant to insect attacks and decay. As new sap sapwood forms, the sapwood closest to the center of the tree is no longer needed and it dies. It also becomes heartwood. Water in the wood decreases and chemicals such as tannins accumulate and that helps resist insects and diseases. And here's just a slice of what, uh, in this particular one, this is a conifer. But it uh, gives you an idea of what the sapwood looks like and the heartwood, and of course, it still has the pith in the center.